Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Financial Friday. I am Pastor Nick. I love you. Um, I'm excited about the word this morning. God loves you. Um, man, I had an opportunity to spend a little time with my spiritual mom yesterday. Uh, she's in town. Uh, and man, I got to tell you, anytime I'm around that young lady, um, faith just goes up, man. You know, she was talking about trusting God this morning and how you have to constantly renew your mind, man. And, and you know, what's awesome is you, when you're around somebody that not only talks it, but walks it, you know, <clears throat> walks it. You know, when we're talking about things, no matter what I bring up <clears throat> or we're discussing, we could talk about what is and what's going on and how it is, but it always, with her, it always ends up back to the word. You know, I trust God. What does God say? Man, That that's where we need to be as born again believers. That's the place, that's the mark that we have to aspire to, that we have to press to, that we have to always push in on. So today what I want to talk about, and I want to get going because this I want this to be a little bit of a, a teaching today. I know it's Financial Friday and you're like, well, Pastor, why are you talking about covetousness? I want my money. That's why I'm on Financial Friday. Well, I want to help you get your money, okay? Um, and today I want to talk about understanding the word covetousness. What does it mean to be covet, to covet something? Okay. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, for all of those that are all winning in the word today. I thank you, Father, for their faithfulness, for joining, for wanting to be part of this broadcast, for wanting to, to want to feed their faith and starve their doubt to death. Say it with me. No more doubt. We're not going to doubt God's word. We're going to doubt our doubt doubts. God will do exactly what he says he'll do. So I thank you for each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Deacon Daryl. Good morning, Lakeisha. Good morning, Miss Alma. Desiree, good morning to you, young lady. Good to see you. Um, to my cousin Desi, good morning, Desi. God bless you. To my sister, Mary Jo, God bless you, Candace. God bless you. Uh, cousin Faye, God bless you. Uh, Miss Carmen, God bless you. Uh, Cynthia, God bless you. Paula, you and Chip, God bless you. Rita, God bless you from Pensacola. Uh, Natasha, Jerry, Jerry, Amanda, Jennifer, Michael, Shanika, Miss Patty, God bless you. Uh, Annie, Harry, uh, Keita, Natifa, Amanda, uh, Ashley, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining. I want to get into this word real quick, man, because uh, God put this on my heart. I want to talk today about understanding covetousness, understanding covetousness. So the the Webster's definition of covetousness is eager or an excessive desire, especially when it comes to wealth or possessions. Now, the reason why it's important that you understand that is because it says especially. This is not a word that's a, an attack on you having wealth or you having things. It, and as a matter of fact, God clearly tells us, and this is what I want to show you today, because so many people get it confused. Oh, well, God don't want you covetous, coveting things. God doesn't want you to have a nice house, and God doesn't want you to have a nice car. That's a lot. God wants you to have the very best of everything. He just doesn't want the very best of everything to have you. Let me say it again. God wants you to have the very best of everything, but he doesn't want the very best of everything to have you. He wants no other God before him. He is a jealous God, right? He wants to be numero uno for my Spanish people. For my English folks, number one. He wants to be number one in your life. So he says an eager, the, the, the dictionary says an eager or excessive desire, especially for wealth or possessions. So that tells me that there are other things that you could covet besides wealth and possessions. What's the key to knowing if you're coveting something or not? You have an inordinate desire for it. In other words, how do you know? Well, what does it mean, Pastor? How do I define an inordinate desire? Let me give you the simple way for a Christian to define an inordinate desire. You put it before God. You put it before God's word. You choose to do opposite of what God's word says with it. 
and you choose to covet it. Let me give you one that you never thought of. You ready? I'm going to take out the money realm. Your, you can covet your children. Your children can become covetousness to you. Give me an example, Pastor. You put your kids before God. You're so worried and afraid something bad's going to happen to your kids that instead of trusting God with your kids, trusting God with their outcome, trusting God with their lives, you sit there in worry, anxiety, depression, and fear instead of trusting God. But pastor, what happens if, if they get in a car wreck and they die? They're in heaven. Again, do you trust God? You're going to be with them for eternity. I, I understand it's hard. I've lost a kid. I, I, I know. I have a father that lost, buried two of his sons. I understand it. I've already buried some of my brothers. I get lost. But still, I have to trust God. I can't be covetousness, become covetousness for the loss that I put them before God. Meaning I have this inordinate desire for them to come back. No, they're home with God. I got to trust that God said they're in a better place. See how covetousness works? It doesn't even have to be to that degree. You take your, your what God, your, your, your money, and you're so worried about spoiling your kids, you take from God to give to your kids. Covetousness. Social media so often encourages us to compare ourselves to others. What does that do? It inspires covetousness, right? He looked at his boss's new car with covetous eyes. He had a craving for, for power that led to covetousness. He wanted power so bad. The Hebrew translation for covetousness is shabbed. C-H-A-M-A-D, C-H-A-M-A-D, which is commonly translated in English to covet, which means a lust or a strong desire, strong desire. You're going to get some good teaching this morning. Hold on. Don't hang up on me. Pastor, I thought we we're talking about our money. We are. I'm going to help you with the money part too, and I'm going to show you how this ties in. In the Greek word, the word covetous comes from the Greek uh, concordance 4124. 4124, and it means plexia. P-L-E-O-N-E-X-I-A. It means lusting for greater a greater number of temporal things that go beyond what God determines is watch this, eternally best. So again, God doesn't have a problem with you having things. But what's best for you? The Bible says all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. Some of us don't have money. Some of us don't have wealth because God knows the minute we get wealth, that it's going to lead us away from him. So he's got to keep you broke. Well, no, God, I repent. The devil's got to keep you broke because the devil knows that's the way to keep you, keep you from doubting God, not trusting God. In the book of Mark, chapter 7, I want you to see this. Mark, chapter 7, verse 22. Listen to the words used with covetousness. It talks about thieves, covetousness, wickedness deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye and blasphemy. Those are the things that are, are, are included with covetousness. Look at the word Luke. Oh, there's a test at the end of this. Because today we're talking about money. And what we need to get to is some of us don't have our money because we truly coveted money. We have a covetousness uh, relationship with our finances. I'm going to demonstrate that, that to you. I'm going to show you that. In the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 15, in the Amplified. Luke chapter 12, verse 15, in the Amplified. 
It said, and he said to them, guard yourself and keep free from all, A-L-L, covetousness, the immoral desire for wealth, the greedy longing to have more, the greedy longing to have more. Nothing wrong with more. Are you being greedy in your more? Oh, don't worry. I'm going to, what does that mean, pastor? We're going to get to it. Stay with the Holy Spirit here. It says, for a man's life does not consist in and is not derived from possessions, possessing overflowing abundance or that which is over and above his needs. His needs. Now, see, you would say, well, pastor, but on one set, you tell us God wants us overflowing. God wants us to have life. God wants us to enjoy life. God wants us to have and enjoy life to the full till it overflows. You say that all the time. You end every message by saying enjoy life. Now you're saying God don't want us having that. That's not what I said. That's not what the word of God said. See, we don't read the word. We don't study the word. And we allow the enemy to condemn us with the word. It says, for a man's life does not consist in. It's not only having overflow. There's much more. There's much more. What does that mean? The overflow can't be your God. The overflow can't. See, the overflow really isn't for you. The overflow is for the kingdom. The overflow, everything that you're, everything about your life that's overflowing should be used for the kingdom of God. And that's when you'll begin to overflow even more. Now, here comes a test. Let me give you a test. We all just got our W-2s. We all just got our tax returns. I don't know any of you. Meaning, meaning a lot of you aren't in my church. Um, a lot of you don't even, maybe even belong to a church or whatever. But I'm going to give you a test. I, I do this all the time with people that talk about money. One time I had a bunch of people on Facebook bashing my spiritual great-grandfather, Pastor Dollar. A bunch of them about him getting a private jet. And I challenged them all to show up downtown Orlando at the plaza. And I said, I would bring my tax returns for the last five years. And if any of them showed up, any of them on that chain that was bashing my man of God, saying that he was greedy, trying to get people's money. If any of them showed up with their tax returns and can show me where they gave a tenth to anything, gave a tenth to the, to the National Dog Society, but gave a tenth of their income away at a minimum, I would match whatever charity they gave to if they showed up downtown. You know how many of them showed up? None. Because people that are always talking about the people that are doing things for God, those are the people that are doing nothing for God. So here's how you know where you're at. Here's how you measure yourself. I'm going to give you a self-test. The Holy Spirit's going to give you a self-test because that's why you're on today. Take your W-2. Take your that, that line that says what your total earnings were. Take that line and go down and look at the line that says what your total charitable contributions were for the year. I'm going to tell you right now how you can give yourself a test and know if you're covetous. If you have a covetous spirit, if that number is below 10%, you have a covetous spirit. You have a covetous spirit because you covet money. Why? How can you say it, Pastor? Because God said a tenth of all that we get is his. And you're not even giving God anything when you tithe. You're just demonstrating that he can trust you with money and that you don't covet money. So if, if, if you give a tenth, then you know you're not a covetous man. However, if you only give a tenth, what you show is you're a religious man. You're a religious man. Why? Because God said the tenth is his. You haven't given anything. What you give, what you sow to receive a harvest is over and above the tenth. That's why I tell all of you right now, if you have a church, your tithe goes to your church. 
<clears throat> when you sow into this ministry, if it's not your church, that's your over and above. That's where God blesses you. That's where the blessings of the Lord maketh rich come from. Why? Because you've demonstrated by your giving that you don't covet money. And now God can trust you with money. I stopped giving a tenth 15 years ago now. Maybe, maybe even more. And God has blessed my life. God always gives me in abundance. No matter what's going on in my life, abundance comes to me. Why? Because God knows money don't have me. If, if, if I'm planning something and God says, take that money and go do this with it, I'll go do that with it. I don't covet money. I don't covet things. I don't covet. I was just trying to buy my wife a $100,000 Maserati for her birthday. She don't want it. She wants something else. That's too much. And I don't, I don't really need that. I want, I want something else. She may get one, but maybe a lesser one. Cause I was trying to buy her this one that was all tricked out and everything. No, nah, she's good. There are other things that maybe she desires. And you know, what's funny. The other things she desires have to do with others, not her. That's how, you know, you come to this place where you're not covetous no more, but pastor, I just got to get to even, and then I'll give. No, you won't. You'll never give. You'll never be a giver. You'll never be a giver because it'll never be enough. I watch people that have never given, get a bunch of money, get money, still don't give. But you hear them say, oh, if I hit the lottery or if I get this, if I get that, then I'll tie. Still don't tie. There are some people that rather die than give God a tenth of what they got. They could never do it. They can't even figure it out in their mind. And they want to know why they're sick. And they want to know why they struggle. And they want to know why they're depressed. They want to know why all this happens to them. Because you covet money. Money's the elementary thing. Money's the elementary thing. And you know, Pastor Deborah talked about this morning, and it's the scripture we're going to use to sow. And I know a lot of y'all might have left today. You might not like this message, but it's true. If you want real financial freedom in your life, stop letting money have you. Stop letting things have you. It's not only about money, it's about serving, right? It's about giving of your resources. It's about serving in the kingdom, and it's about worshiping God. That's how we break free of covetousness. In the book of Luke, as we give today, we're giving on Luke, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not of thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct thy path. Child of God, God wants to bless you. God wants you to have abundance. He wants you to have overflow. But that overflow and abundance is not only for you. It is to expand and further the kingdom of God on this earth. So as you give today, go to www.ltmorlando.org forward slash give. Sow your seed. If you've been covetous, make a decision today that today you're no longer going to be covetous. You're going to break that cycle and watch God take what you have and bless your generations with it. Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. Till Monday. Join us Sunday, man. We're continuing on the blueprint of the believer uh, at church Sunday, 11 o'clock. Until then, uh, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life.